Hi guys and welcome to my official pregnancy story video. This video is about my journey with identical twins, aka these little munchkins. We've got twin A Theo and twin B Leo. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below and like this video and let's get into the story. This video is going to be discussing my eventful pregnancy of MCDA identical twin boys. So it's a pretty long story so I'll start all the way from the beginning. So I got married in August 2015 and once we got married we thought let's not try to get pregnant but let's not prevent it, we'll just go with the flow and that's what we did. So mid-October I, my best friend asked me to go out to lunch with her, so went out for lunch, caught up, and she revealed to me that she was pregnant, and they weren't trying either, so it was a huge shock, and she was telling me, you know, all her symptoms and everything that happened, and as she was telling me her story, I was thinking, I am getting these exact same symptoms. So probably for a few weeks before that, I'd been getting really bad cramps, I had the sorest boobs, I was so tired, but I just thought, oh, I'm probably getting my period soon, you know, just girly things. And I didn't say anything, but I was just like in my head, I just knew I'm pregnant. So I, on the 31st of October, I was at my boyfriend's house. Boyfriend? What do you mean boyfriend? Husband, sorry. I yeah, that's husband. right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We were still waiting for our house to be built, so he was still living with his parents and I was still living with my parents. So I waited till it was the weekend and I was at his and I took a test. And I did it by myself in the bathroom. I didn't tell him that I thought I was pregnant or anything. I just had some tests there ready to go and it said pregnant. And oh I couldn't believe gosh. it, but I was so excited but scared, but we were ready for it. We'd been together for 10 years and we're married and it was it was very exciting. So um, Jacob came in and I gave him the test and he didn't even know. He's like, what is this? I'm like, it's a pregnancy test. And he thought it was positive and we were both just so excited and wanted to tell everyone, but we thought, let's just wait. We'll tell, we were going out to dinner that night with the family and we thought we'll tell them then. A family friend ended up coming on the dinner, so we thought, oh my God, okay, we don't wanna say anything. So it was so hard because, you know, usually I'm hitting the cocktails pretty hard when we go out for dinner and stuff like that. And I think everyone is pretty sus when I got a milkshake instead. So that was really awkward. And so um, the next day I tried to get into a doctor, um, but it was a weekend and they were like, there's nothing. And I was like, I think I'm pregnant. And they're like, look, if you're pregnant, the pregnancy tests are 99% accurate. So you're pregnant and don't stress about it. The doctors won't even make you do a test because the home pregnancy test is so accurate. So um, I didn't end up going to the doctor till probably a week later. But um, yeah, so we were pregnant and we told his parents that weekend. And then we waited till Monday. We went to my parents and I showed them the photo of all the tests. And... They just looked at it and they didn't know what it was either. I don't know what's wrong with everyone, but they were just like, what? And then everyone was so excited. And then the 18th of November was our first scan. So we went in, She, they did all the measurements, found out I was about seven weeks pregnant and um, everything was looking awesome. And then about halfway through, she was really quiet and I was just waiting and then she went I think there's another one in there and we just looked at each other and we were just I did not even think that twins are possible we have no twins in the family on either side and I didn't even cross my mind that that might happen so turns out I was having identical twins so MCDA twins which means they share a placenta but they had their own sex so we, I remember calling my parents straight after, bawling my eyes out of fear, but also excitement. And everyone was just so excited. These are the first grandchildren on both sides. And it was just such a happy time for everyone. So 
that was really exciting and we wanted to announce the pregnancy to everyone on Christmas Day on Facebook. So I'll insert that photo here. It was really cute and um, everyone was just so happy for us and it was just a great time. So on the 12th of Feb, we went on holiday like an early baby moon to Noosa because my best friend Tamara was pregnant as well. She was due... I think about a month before me. So we thought, let's go, because we've been to Europe together and this is probably our last trip, just us four. So we went to Noosa for the weekend and at that time I had my gender scan and we found out we were having boys and pretty much every scan, we knew it was boys. There was just willies everywhere. So it was definitely boys, um, but now we knew for sure. So that was very exciting. We could start shopping for boys clothes and everything like that. And then so a couple weeks later, we went on holiday to Melbourne because um, my husband had some work there, then to Adelaide for a wedding, and then back to Melbourne to finish some of the work he was doing. So on that trip, I remember feeling really heavy and I was only about 22 weeks pregnant, but I felt so full, like I was going to explode. And I was just thinking, if this is how I feel halfway through, what am I gonna feel at the end? And I could hardly walk, I was in a lot of pain. And I remember we were in Melbourne, my favorite place to go shopping, and I didn't even shop. I stayed in my hotel room by myself and just slept. And I was like asking my mom, is this normal? She said, yeah, you're having twins, of course you're gonna feel full. So I thought, all right, it'll be fine. So I think this day after I got we got back from that trip, I had a scan. And that scan was to measure all the organs of the babies and make sure everything was all good. So baby A, Theo, and baby B, Leo. So baby A could measure it all fine, great. Baby B, there was a heartbeat, but he wasn't moving. And she was like, oh, he's just sleeping. It's okay, we'll go back to him later. And, uh, but she really couldn't get, measure the heart properly because he was so like squished up and not moving. So. Uh, she called in the head ultrasound um, technician and he came in and he said to the lady, has baby B moved? And she said, oh no, no, I think she's sleeping. He's like, he's not sleeping, he has no fluid and the sac is like cling wrap around him. And he said, you've got twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Now, twin to twin transfusion syndrome is a horrible disease and as soon as they find out you're having identical twins they just pound it down your throat that this is a possibility but they never tell you what to look out for and if I had known the symptoms I might have been able to detect it earlier I don't know if that would have helped but it would have been great to know what would happen now they booked me in for scans every couple of weeks to look out for this um, to detect it which is really great but they should explain more what you're gonna feel so of course, a symptom is feeling really, really full, like you're going to explode, cramps, like really bad cramping, and those were things I was definitely feeling. So he uh, said I had to go to the Royal Brisbane Hospital, and there they have the maternal fetal medicine team, MFM, and they're experts in this. So they booked me in there. I was really upset. My husband had to work at ultrasound, so I was with my mother-in-law, and I just couldn't stop crying she had to call my husband and let him know what was happening because I couldn't talk and it was just heartbreaking because you once you find out you have twins it's so exciting because it's such a special gift and you know not everyone has twins and you have in your head you're having two you buy two of everything you've got two names picked out and to think that you might lose this amazing gift is just heartbreaking so we went to the Royal they scanned me and they said, yep, yeah, you've got it. It's stage one, which is the the mildest form. And, but there's only a 60% chance that you're gonna, you know, come out of this with two babies. So they were pretty convinced Leo wasn't gonna make it. He had hardly any fluid and um, it wasn't looking good. So it's not safe for both babies. So the donor baby b was giving all the nutrients to baby a and so baby b is obviously not going to make it if there's no fluid and baby a is also not going to make it if there's too much fluid it can cause heart failure so the twin to twin syndrome is when the placenta decides to not share 
between the babies properly so it ends up giving all the nutrients to one baby and nothing to the other baby. So the ways to fix this is laser surgery where they come in with a big laser you stick in your stomach and they sever some cords between the placenta and the baby um, that's getting too much nutrient so that it kind of evens out. Now I wasn't a good candidate for that. They said there's probably no possibility that I could get that because number one, my placenta was on the top. So they would have to come underneath the placenta to do it and it was just wasn't possible. They were probably gonna laser a baby. And number two, because I was overweight, it was just harder. There was more mass to deal with. Um, and the little scope can only go so far. So they said, all we can do is a fluid reduction. Try to get some of that fluid out of your stomach and hopefully that sometimes evens things out for a while and just we just need to get the pregnancy along as I was only about 23 weeks at the time and you need to get to about 28 weeks and that's when your babies kind of have a good chance of surviving so they booked me in a couple of days later I asked you know do I need to bring clothes am I meant to stay the night they said no it's just like a day procedure just get it done and you'll be home and I said all right so we went in early in the morning they stuck a big needle in my stomach and they began taking out fluid. Now they took out about three liters of fluid and it took about half an hour. It was a bit crampy, but it wasn't horrible. And um, that really, really helped. I felt so much lighter. My stomach was so much smaller and I was hoping that it would fix things. Now. Once it happened, they said, all right, take her to her bed. She's in for the night. And I had nothing with me. So, and I thought, obviously I would have to stay the night because it was a pretty big procedure and they wanted to make sure the babies were okay. So I had to spend the night. And then the next morning they scanned me again and everything was looking great, but they noticed that my cervix was shortened. Now, I think in a pregnancy, your cervix is meant to stay at about 20 centimeters. And as you progress into labor, it comes shorter and shorter and begins dilating. But mine was already doing that and I was nowhere near labor. So they said, we, you need to stay in hospital till the babies are born, pretty much. Now, when you're not expecting to stay, you don't have any clothes, you haven't prepared mentally or got anything ready, it really is hard to deal with. And I've never heard of people having to stay in on hospital bed rest for pregnancy, but it's really common. So if you are going through this, this is a possibility and it is really hard to deal with, but I've been through it and I've got definitely got tips on how to, you know, stay sane. So I was in there for eight weeks and it was the first week I remember crying every single day. I just, you know, you miss out on watching your belly progress with your friends and having a baby shower and getting the nursery ready and shopping for all the cute baby things. And I was just stuck in a hospital bed, just watching the world go by. I think my view was a concrete wall. I didn't even have a view of the sky. I hardly went outside. And mentally it's really challenging, but I just stayed positive. And now, during that time, I had to get weekly steroid shots in my leg and they killed, but that was to help the baby's lungs develop so that if they were born early, they had a higher chance of survival. I had to have pessaries um, put, put in every single night and that was used for a singleton pregnancy to help stop your cervix shortening. It hadn't been proved to work for twins, but they said just do it, it's not gonna hurt anything to help you stay, keep those babies in longer. So I did everything they told me to do. Um, and then when I was about oh, probably 27 weeks, I developed gestational diabetes and diet control wasn't working. So I was given insulin and metformin. So I had to put insulin in between, before every single meal, metformin every single night. And you know, that was another thing to deal with. I couldn't um, soothe my boredom with food anymore. I had to try to eat as healthy as I could. No more chocolate, no more sugar, and just try to be as healthy as I can. And that was really hard. I wasn't as strict as I probably should have been, but I was just doing the best I could to keep positive in there. So 
that all happened and then during that time the babies were doing awesome they were growing really well the twin to twin was staying away i was getting scans at MF, mfm every single week and my tips for surviving in hospital are talk to the midwives because they're really really lovely and they're going to become your friends when you're in there for that long and you know i would have my regular nurses and they come and have a chat i had my moments where i would break down and they'd be really great to talk to um, the ladies at MFM, it was great to see them every week. They were so happy to see that I was still pregnant every week. And what really helped me as well was I had this little blackboard. And it's like really special to me because I had this up in my room with how many weeks I was pregnant. And each week it was really exciting to be able to rub it out and have an, I was another week pregnant. And, you know, the nurses would come in and they were like, oh, we've never seen anyone do that before. Um, so... And that really helped me mentally as well. And so I just have their little names on there now hanging up in the house. It just reminds me of what I've gone through and I have beautiful babies now at the end of it. So every minute was worth it. So, so yeah, talk to the midwives. They're your friends. They're going to help you through this. Have a little countdown system, whether it's a calendar and mark off the dates each day, because that really helps you get through and you can see, wow, I've gone through so much. I'm nearing the end. Like you've got to remember pregnancy, you're not going to be pregnant your whole life. You're going to get out of there eventually and treat it like a holiday. I just kept telling myself, I'm probably never going to be able to sit in bed all day and watch Netflix, watch movies, have a nap, whatever I want. And sometimes I do miss those days of just being able to relax. Like now that they're born, I never get to watch a movie in full. So like, just enjoy it. Enjoy not having to cook, not having to clean, have as long as you want in the shower, do a face mask. My friends would come and we do our nails. And I, I am really, really lucky that I had so many friends and family that would come and visit me. I think there was only two days the whole day that I was there when no one came. So it was really, really nice. And I felt so loved and I am grateful to, so much to my friends and family for helping me because if I didn't have them, it would be a whole different story. So people that don't have any family or friends to visit, because I know there are people that come um, to those big hospitals from out of town, just talk to the midwives and they're there for you as well. And there's, you know, the um, social worker, they're always really lovely, um, the chaplain, um, there's so many people that are going to support you, you know, and just, just try to stay positive. You're not alone. You've got your little babies in there with you. So that really helped me as well, and I was doing it for them. So that was an amazing experience. Um, you know, I go on little dates down to the cafeteria with my friends. That, you know, just those little things really helped. We go outside for a little bit, get a bit of sun, and you know, watch movies and my husband would come as many t times a week as he could, and my parents, my in-laws. So that was such a learning experience for me to just how to be positive and get through things. So that was that. And then the 3rd of May, I had another scan and it, they found that my cervix had actually grown. And I just feel that it's a miracle because they've never really heard of cervixes growing. It very, very rarely happens. And I was about 31 and a half weeks and um, they said, yeah, it's grown. And it was a different doctor that did it that time, not my usual. So there's usually the older town technician, uh, Renika and Joe, and then my doctor, Dr. Minuzzo. Dr. Minuzzo would come with her team every morning to see how I was and feel my tummy and everything. Um, and this day, for some reason, was someone different. And she said, yeah, my cervix had grown, but it wasn't up to her to send me home. So I was like, oh, I wish Renuka was here because if she had done it, she would be allowed to tell me if I could go home or not. So I left the ultrasound room and I was walking back to my room. Renuka was there with Dr. Minuzzo, which was crazy. And I ran up to them and I said, my cervix has grown can I go home? I just wanted to go home and be normal and just spend, you know, that little bit of time, just me and my husband before the babies would come and get everything ready and just enjoy those times being pregnant and, you know, dressing my cute little belly. And they said, look, let's look at the results and we'll come see you in the morning. So 
I was like, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And then the morning she came, she said, yep, looks good, go home. <laughs> anything, any twinges, you need to come to the hospital ASAP. So, because that was one of the reasons they wouldn't let me go home, they said because my cervix was so short, the babies could come in like an hour, and I live about 40 minutes from the hospital, so I probably wouldn't make it. But now she said, you know, you're almost at 32 weeks, and any hospital can deal with you at that point, but if you feel anything, you've got to come straight back. So I said, yep, yeah, that's fine, and, and, then, and I wasn't allowed to be on my own. So I ended up living, moving in with the in-laws um, and that was really great. They took really great care of me and I just had to rest, not do too much. I caught up with a few friends, did a little bit of baby shopping and on the 19th of May, I had another scan. So I went back to the Royal. Um, They're really glad, glad to see me again and I'm still pregnant and I was about... 33, almost 34 weeks. And they had a look and Leo had stopped progressing from the last week. So he stopped growing and they said, okay, look, you reached a really healthy time in your pregnancy. Everything's gonna be fine, but we need to deliver you tomorrow. And I was just, I wasn't ready. I had my baby shower um, booked for a week's time. I thought, I've got time you know, to deliver, because I said I'd probably deliver about 36 weeks. So I had all these things planned and they were blown out the window. So I came in on the Friday and yeah, that's going to be in my next video, my labor story. So to complete the video, I just want to reinstate. So twin to twin transfusion syndrome, if you're going through it, there is so many support groups. Um, I'm part of a Facebook group. I'll insert the link underneath. And, you know, I was on that during my time just looking for positive stories because the doctors can be very negative because they just want to tell you worst case scenario, but it's quite heartbreaking because always remember they don't have the final say in what happens to your body. You just got to keep positive and read those positive stories because yes, it does happen, but it doesn't mean your babies are going to die. So, um, and also if you're on hospital bed rest, keep positive as well. Just relax, enjoy the time, and just remember you're doing it for your babies. And it's such a short time in the scheme of things. I can't even remember it now. When I was there, it felt like forever. But positivity, I think, is the thing that's going to get you through all those hard times. And I also want to thank everyone at the Royal Brisbane Hospital, um, all the doctors, all the midwives, they were all amazing through the whole thing and really supportive. And I'm really happy with the care I got there. So I'm definitely gonna go there for my next baby. I also wanna do a shout out to all my beautiful friends and family. Your support during that time meant so much to me and really helped me through it. Now, if you guys have any questions on this video on MCDA twins, identical twins, or twin to twin transfusion syndrome, please leave me a comment down below. And I can also do more videos specifically targeted at each of those topics if you want. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And stay tuned for my upcoming videos, which will be my labor story, the part two of the story, and also a little montage of all my time throughout the hospital and the twins' first days of life. It's very, very cute. You don't want to miss out. Thank you so much, guys, and see you next time. Bye. <laughs>